On November 28, 1932, a child was born here in Kake, a small locality in Kumba in the southwest region, whose life would become an inspiration to generations yet unborn. In the heart of this fast-growing, sometimes disorderly town, Honorable Chief Okia Namata Ilangwe stands out like a beacon of hope in a world that sometimes loses its bearings. Son of one Motuba Elangwe, his elementary training already was carving out for great things given his very early association with the country's high and mighty. I entered Krake Infant Practicing School, Government Practicing School, here where we are. People like Esti Muna were trained here. Great men, they all trained here in those days because the only a, a teacher's training center you had in the whole of Cameroon. And all of them came here, the Indelis and so forth. As soon as you finish with class two, you go to Kumba, government school, you are admitted there. We continued to six. It was an eight-year course in those days. And so here, I did everything here. Sase College in Buya was naturally the dream school for everyone in former West Cameroon looking to do serious things in society. It is here that Chief Namata Ilangwa studied and his intellectual savvy would earn him a scholarship from the Cameroon Development Corporation CDC to study pharmacy in Nigeria, even if his calling would eventually draw him to the rough and tumble of politics. So as a college boy, did my senior Cambridge there, exempt, I passed my, my senior Cambridge, exempted from London matriculation. I was recommended for higher studies. The CDC was prepared to take me as a pharmacy a train, a trainee, pharmacy trainee. There I took the competitive exam to Lagos, Yaba School of Pharmacy faculty. I passed and I was given CDC scholarship to go and do pharmacy in Lagos. There I went to Lagos and qualified 1955, July, and I came back. It's easy, absorbed me for a while, but uh, I think I had the urge to serve the nation more than that, than that uh, capacity. And so I established what they call the Premier Pharmacy, opposite the post office then, Kumba. Then I then entered politics, 1956. So I was doing both politics and pharmacy. And I contested my first elections, 1958, which I lost here in Kumba Town. Here in Kumba Town. Two years after that, 1961, I went in again and my constituency became even larger, right to Upper Balong, my men, Bonga and all that. I had to do trekking, going behind the big, big lorries with cocoa and so forth. 
had no vehicle, no car. Like people now have, and have jolly rides all over, or picked from the houses, they become members of parliament, and so on. And I think uh, I won elections with flying colors. Entered, that was 1961, I entered parliament. I went in for a second election after the expiration of the mandate, first mandate, and won. And during that period, I was appointed as Minister of Finance in the West Cameroon, a post I held until I was appointed the first Minister of Mines and energy in Yaoundé. But before then, we had formed the CNU in 1966. And I was uh, assistant um, treasurer next to Sanda Umaru who was then Minister of Justice, and so forth. So I worked. In 1969, I was elected at Gaga Congress as Assistant Political Secretary next to Ayuti Vondo in Gaga Congress. And so I worked on the ladder. We got to independence, but how? People still contract and say that it was not first October. Say it was not first October, but I'm speaking to you as an eyewitness, and one will play the part. I was with Honorable N. N. Bile, Nerius Damaso Bile, in Manfi to celebrate first October as Independence Day for us. I was in Manfi, I accompanied him. I accompanied him. Whether he belonged to which party or what, but it was Juba who sent him. And so I accompanied him. Well, I don't know. There, there were people who did not believe either in joining Nigeria, who did not believe in going to. East Cameroon, who, who believed in staying here where they were born and bred and so forth. And uh, I felt that it was something which needed people to examine the pros and the cons of each accession. And so I want to make it clear to you that I was not tied to the apron strings of any political party. No, but I went out to explain things to people. Yes, I did, and up to now I still talk freely on that issue. I still talk freely. I'm not tied. I was following people to weigh the two, the two alternatives, because the man who was representing the British people himself was not sure what he was talking when he said, even if Southern Cameroon prefers to join the, uh, the, uh, the Commonwealth or whatever it is, the golden key to the Bank of England will not be given them. What do you do that I was telling? Coming from the president of Great Britain in the United Nations, and they knew that we needed money. But they, and they tried to over stress the fact that we were a poor country. I tried to convince the chiefs in Meiji that we were not poor. We were not poor in that. There are records that Southern Cameroon's marketing board loan Nigeria sums of money 
which the Jedi used to build the railway from the south to the north, the harbor, the University of Ibadan, and so forth and all that. And I, talking to you, wrote a letter to go on. I wanted the payment of that money. After receiving permission from S.T. Muna, who was the Prime Minister, it passed through as usual. And go on replied that they were in a state of war. They were in a state of crisis. After that, they will think about that blow. Well, that was not given by the whole strategy. It was only the marketing board. And you go and tell people that you were poor. So there were a lot of mis misrepresentations that one had to avoid involving himself left and right unnecessarily. All models in history break down at one time or the other. All models. And if you want to repair any model, you don't go on that same spot to try to repair it. You move a bit apart and then you can think of building a new model. Learning from the mistakes of the past so you can have a real model which can stand the test of time. But it is said that one of the purposes of creation is what? The people, the people to, uh, to feel and know and respect the existence of beauty. Yes. Around this time, you have people, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness to make a better and fuller life for people. If people find it a better and fuller life, they can do it. If any form of government becomes destructive to these ends, it is the right of the people to do whatever they you know better than myself. That's why we're making laws, because it is not easy for a better and fuller life, for you to, to have, to enjoy a better and fuller life. Justice. Justice. Quite easy. But what we, what, what we lack, my dear, courage to do these things. We haven't. We haven't courage to resist even the trials and temptations day by day. We haven't courage to say, no, this thing is wrong. If I enjoy it, what of my children? What of the part of posterity? That's why I've mentioned to you, my 17. We left it not for this type of story buildings. Yes, you can have them, but the place will be well planned. You, see, you must have the courage. You, see, you must have the courage. People must, there must be peace. We are trying to say that there is peace. But the same time we must say there is courage to have the wrongs either of the past or so righted. They must be righted. We cannot be talking just about peace, 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 peace. We're leaving the wrongs there. Continually going on. No. No. We're the builders of this country. And when I talk, I talk without any fear because I know what I've passed through. Reunification is very important in that it brings people together, it has brought us together, we collaborate together, we do things together and all that.
But one part, a major thing is that the language system. We see most things being written in French and not in English. And that's why even in the chief's meeting, we have always uh, 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 spoken very seriously about it. That since we are collaborators, we are brothers of, of, of the same family, I can say, because we are now one, anything written in French should also be written in, in English. A lot have been done on education, on health, administration, etc., etc. There are a number of things also lacking to be done, which we feel if they are done, we shall be happy, the government, and we shall continue to thank God for uniting us. Particularly the roads. You know, our development goes along with the roads. And when you have good roads, development follows. After several years, under British administration and under the French Cameroon, the British Southern Cameroon decided once again to reunite with their brothers over the Mongo, to bring back the status of German Cameroon as one and indivisible nation. Quite important. When something has happened, it has happened. You can't do otherwise. But the real privilege is not there again, like how we were in before. You see? For now, it becomes, before you get any right, you must travel from here to um, Yaounde. And you will go to Yaounde. They will not even care to look whether you, there's somebody uh, fighting for something. I know of my daughter, many times he, uh, he going to Yawande, leave him Dian and pay and go to Yawande to follow up his uh, uh, dossiers. If I was a politician, I'm, 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 as others are, I would have been fighting to have independence like any other country. If people like um, uh, St. Elizabeth, uh, Equatorial Guinea can be independent, why not we? Sometimes we are quick at drawing conclusions. If I can remember my definition of history very well, a study of time and space, what was done yesterday cannot be the same thing being done now. Times always change. Ideas always come. And things get improved. Be and things get improved. So what German Cameroon was cannot be compared with what Gem I mean, post-German Cameroon, that's a reunified Cameroon nation today. I have a feeling Cameroonians are beginning to learn history is not a pot of soup. You will take meat, take the slice, and in a, in a matter of time you have what to eat. It takes time. It takes time for adjustments to be made, for comparisons to be made, for conclusions to be drawn. So, in my opinion, I have a feeling and I think a good one that we are at the verge of regaining our status. Believing that once we can put the two colonial experiences, not under the Germans, but under the French and the British, we take a bit of what is good under the French, a bit of what was good under the British, and blend them together. I have a feeling that this country will become the lighthouse of the rest of Africa. That's my opinion. What I tell you is not what the other person will tell you. People have divergent views over the issue of reunification. But what I am interested in is what is, it, what is the end result going to be like. And that is where I challenge you, I challenge myself, that if we believe that this is our Cameroon, our own nation, a nation some of us are treating as if we were strangers in it, we stand a chance. We stand a chance to build a better Cameroon. 
In fact, I'm very happy with the government. It's only because I'm handicapped. I should have even loved to see the president and congratulate him for the way he has handled Cameroon. There has been peace. They have tried to destroy, but they cannot solve it. But I am glad to say that the President of the Republic said it a long time ago that he was a Cameroonian. He was born a Cameroonian and is Cameroonian. He will die. I have this very, very strong feeling that when we respect the institutions of this nation, when you will ask a Cameroonian child, you go to the United States of America, you go to Europe, you go here, and he or she will tell you, damn you, what am I going to do there? All this will be as a result of the fact that we all come together and say that this is our nation. We must develop it in the interest of all. Cameroon may today pride itself as a country rich in oil and minerals, but credit must be given to the Honorable Namata Elangwe, who in his day as Minister of Mines dismissed the misperceptions about Cameroon's oil reserves. In fact, he still has a clinical memory of how he enabled Cameroon get its first drops of oil and opened the country to the mining industry. What today is known as the National Oil Refinery owes its existence to the paramount chief of the Bakundo Oroko people. These uh, many institutions with different names, and then we have to give them a national uh, uh, face with everything. Sunel was not Sunel. It had its own different name. I took them of people's S and Ash, which say S and Ish. Is there with Jiang Asumo of blessed memory, Son Lulu Dam? Yes, I used to go there now and again with. Incidentally and happily with Marcel Niat. He was the director general of Sunel. And then uh, Snake of was director general. You had SCDP. They were functioning in that timid way, when I, was, I became a minister, I had to get a real interview with the head of state, telling him what I intend to do. And at that time, take note of this, it was considered that Cameroon hadn't any oil, that the oil in Cameroon was flowing down to Nigeria because we were on the mountain and Nigeria was down, and so it was flowing down. But I told the president, I said, no, I'm a science student. Oh. Oil is trapped in booms. It does not flow like a stream. All that it needs for us to carry out real research and know exactly where we can, we can hit. And the first of that was Kole Marine War. I have the sample of the first drops of Cameroon oil.
and now we become united uh, Republic of uh, Cameroon. He was still the Prime Minister till we went to Yaoundé when the People's Re uh, Republic of uh, Cameroon we back to Yaoundé. That was in Yaoundé. We were still going to night club. He was a simple man. We are no great man to stop people from visiting us now. Everybody can stroll into our compound. We are to the uh, boys' house, home, uh, and ourselves, and a small dog. I was a surgeon general in Central Hospital, Yaoundé. I did all that training of that uh, hospital and teach them how to wear uniform. I noticed that I was the first, not only the first Anglophone, first woman to be given Chevalier Lord de Valet. I never had marriage. In every aspect, he represents the image of a father, number one. Number two, yeah, we usually in Africa judge our parents through the education they have given us. My father lives a modest life today because he has invested in his children. He has been there for us, lock, stock, and barrel. I, bear, I just finished my A-levels at Cas Bambale. He sent me out to the United States for studies. I took a degree in biology, went on to do medicine, and after that a specialty in internal medicine, and then a subspecialty in geriatrics at George Washington uh, University, the first Cameroon-trained geriatrician, and then found myself thereafter with a very patriotic threat to return home 11 years ago, well, 2003, and since 2003, I've been here at Sonora as a medical doctor. It has been my teacher. I remember, I would say this with a little embarrassment, for me to have gotten my GCE English O-level, he was my tutor. I had to do compositions every week. And his topics were more, much, much more serious than GCE O-levels. And the GCE I'm talking about is London. And I remember what he put me through to get through English. He would just choose one topic. He would tell you, today's topic, I say, yes, Papa. He said, rain. How do you write about rain? A 16-year-old, what do you say about rain? And you have to do 250 words. <laughs> you know, so it was an experience which I take with me. And uh, he's somebody who loves to use proverbs and deep thought uh, dictates, like uh, expressions to let you know what he's trying to say. He will not tell you what should obtain, but he will tell you, do this, or this is how I would do if I were you, and then you make your decision. And he is what you would call a prototype career politician. By training, he's a pharmacist. His career has been a remarkable career politically. This structure where I work, Sonara, he is in every aspect the father of Sonara. He is, was during his mandate as Minister of Mines that this property was given to the Cameroon government by the Bakweris. And for that to have happened, it was my father that this was immersed through the traditions and the willingness of the Bakweris to offer this land to Sonara with the promise that nothing will go wrong holds true today. As a statesman, right now he sits as a point of reference. Besides being an encyclopedia, because uh, his memory is impeccable. We are seven of us, five girls, two boys. He's a loving father. When he was out, he was out. When he's in, he makes sure he spends time with us. We sit and converse because he loves politics. All we converse is politics. Because of him, I entered into politics, so that's all we talk about. He's a very loving husband. He's better than my father, my brother, 
I'll go to my mother. I would add my mother inside because there are things maybe I didn't hear from my mother, but I heard from him. And things I didn't get from my father, I got from him. And uh, he has been very caring to the whole family, without exception. In this village where vegetation is still so fresh, where nature still operates in the wild, Honorable Chief Tata Okia Namata Elangwe has proven to be at the center of the people's development endeavors. Driven by the African saying that no one hunt ever tied a bundle, the paramount ruler of the Bakundu Oroko people works daily to build a spirit of cohesion amongst the predominantly agrarian populations. As the people interact daily to reproduce themselves, Chief Namata Ilangwe has proven to be an invaluable asset for development. I had to embrace the whole of Oroko here and in the end division to lead them. To lead them. So a sense of well a sense of unity. A sense of purpose is very important, a binding force. But when you plod on a path, which you have to use people anyway, you must have beacons. So when finally, by the grace of God, you reach your focus, you should be able to look back and identify your path. If you cannot identify your path, you have made a mistake. His Majesty Chief uh, Tataokia Echene Langwe has been very instrumental towards the development of our area and uh, as one who had participated in government affairs in different capacities he was not only serving us but serving the nation as a whole and so he concentrated more on realizing projects that 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 way that that involved the nation like the Sonara affair and other things like that. And uh, with this high concentration on the development of the nation, he had very little to do with us here. We too owe him gratitude on what he did. He was able to extend water, pipe on water, to, my, to uh, Kakewan, Frahakotbe Kakewan, when he was Minister of Mines and Power. But unfortunately, the water did not reach us here. And so, and more to that, he has been our paramount chief. And uh, we pay him allegiance, as, I mean, as far as that is concerned. And he has been doing a lot, even towards the contribution and the development of uh, the tribe. So the Bakundu tribe has two colleges which he, with the collaboration of all the chiefs and the entire tribe, were able to succeed and have them functioning. Um, the colleges we have been able to get and the schools, like primary schools and the colleges, which has been able to bring us to more light. Yeah. If you have people entering here and say they would like to stay. Yeah. So um, we also is also helping to fight against this our bush forest, which people continue to enter without the consultation of the village. 
So we try to stop them. Tibetan language is a good ruler. I took over from his, uh, his father. And I took a Mbebe language. I handled this village with no problem. With very good care, first of all. As you can see by yourself, you see we have about uh, three, two secondary schools here. We have one uh, GB, GSS Kake, it's a GHS Kake, and GTC Kake and the primary school here. Yeah. Yeah. So with his effort, he has done a lot. Since he left even the government, he has been very instrumental in this village as far as development is concerned. And to the Bakundu people in general, let me say so because he has handled Bakundu people for more than 25 years as paramount chief. He even tried to create jobs. He has estates. It's not selfish, it's not self-centered. Yes. He has, he's very open-handed and he has done a lot. Like this road, you see, this uh, road like this, he usually graze the road, uh, the road alone. Very difficult to become angry. Even we annoyed him, he calls us back and advises us what to do. My first value is refinement. Go well, I've never seen that. After this, refinement of everything that belongs to us, of our core. Refinement of our core, that I hold dearly. Refinement. If you don't, you cannot do anything. Despite being a man of means, the paramount ruler of the Bakundu Oroko people doesn't believe in a life of ease. Even at his well-advanced age, Chief Namata Elangwe uses his leisure hours for things that grow society and touch on the lives of ordinary people. This is an agrarian society where coal, rubber and the oil palm constitute some of the main cash crops. In his continuous knack to empower his subjects, Chief Namata Ilangwe has very often offered assistance to local farmers, supplying them with farm inputs and financial assistance with beneficiaries expected to pay back at their own convenience. But sometimes his largesse was rewarded with ingratitude. I produce cocoa, a bit of it. I produce plantains, a bit of it. And when there was uh, the banana doom, I used to produce banana. And then uh, rubber. And my wife uh, is trying to rear chickens and uh, a few goats and a few pigs. We help uh, when I get visitors. After reaching the age in which I am, I think I used to, whether you call it leisure or what, I used to move from, I mean, take my vehicle, not to move from here to the pharmacy and uh, see a few people who want to see me, a few patients. And so I advise them and so forth. And uh, I come back to have my meal for the day because I eat, uh, I really eat only once a day. I really eat my plantains and vegetables. And my gakanga pepper, don't forget that uh, gakanga pepper, very important. All are not very nice. That if you drink with uh, palm wine, very nice. Uh, my boss, uh, Chief Tata Okia, Namata Elangwe, Wabakundu, is a hard-working pharmacy. 
and he loves uh, his workers. I've been working with him for 10 years. He's a strict man. And when you work with a strict man, a man who is strict on his own uh, ability, at least when you follow him and make it, you will, you will understand him and you love what, because he gives you the lines, what you do and what you cannot do. The legacy of Honorable Chief Tata Okianamata Elango Henry will live long even after he is gone. As a politician, he brought his philosophy to bear on the Cameroon political story. As an administrator, he left indelible marks in the country's mining sector. And as a traditional leader, he united his Oroko and Bakundu people for the common cause of development, teaching his people the need to avoid a life of ease and of leisure. As a traditional ruler, I think one of the things I have done is the fact that I have taught people the art of discipline. I have told people, I have shown people that out of the sweat of thy brow shall thou eat bread. They should walk and walk hard. Selling of forests is no art, it's no occupation. Selling of farms is no occupation. And that is what one of the things which actually urged me to form this. Uh, Morocco development and so on, the Bagdu, which are all branches of uh, Morocco and Bagdu. So, and uh, if they can have made the administration to go right in the forest, and even a costed vehicle carrying wood, illegal sent by administration to show them that the law is there and applicable to all of us. You cannot say that you should go and do that and that and that when you yourself can show an example. I think that uh, if people f follow me at my refinement, my peace, peace profound, peace profound, I would say that even if I'm down, they will know that this is what we were taught, this is what we saw, and this is what this man practiced. The profound works of the disciplinarian, driven by a desire to serve and not to be served, and conscious of the need for probity in the management of public funds, and for Chief Namata Elangwe several distinctions under various political administrations in Cameroon, both during the federal government and under a united Cameroon. It is a life that bears a torch light for today's youth who now live in a world of collapsed morality. And so the Bakundu Oroko chief stays on as a beacon of hope in a society in which many have lost hope. His life story could just be the driver for the making of a new Cameroon and a better Cameroon, where discipline and hard work should become the guiding principles for the men and women in public office and for ordinary people working daily for indeed, in the game of politics, Chief Namata Elangwe proved not just an astute politician, but one with a profound influence in Cameroon's search for independence and reunification, as well as the challenges facing the country today. <laughs>